Hi there, my name is Casey Smith, and today I'll be taking you through the posterior draw test of the shoulder. So a little bit of background on the posterior draw test and how it came to be. The posterior draw test was first described and created by Christian Gerber and Reinhold Gans in 1984 at the University of Bern in Switzerland. The posterior draw test was already used for clinical assessment of knee instability, and so they used this posterior draw test of the knee as a comparison for when they translated it up to the shoulder. The need for this test was born out of an overlook for posterior dislocations in clinical evaluations and also radiographic imaging, as well as there already being an apprehension test, but it not being able to detect and test posterior subluxations very well. So some pathologies for this uh, posterior draw test would include recurrent posterior subluxations and general posterior instability of the shoulder and laxity of the glenohumeral joint. These are usually born out of direct trauma and most of the time will spontaneously reduce. So instead of it being completely dislocated, it will dislocate and then reduce, come back in, known as a subluxation. The patient will often complain of weakness and instability with shoulder flexion and shoulder medial rotation. And they also may be apprehensive in certain positions. So in order to perform this test, you will have the patient come in and lie supine. The examiner will then be lateral to the patient or the joint that is being tested. With one arm, you're going to take the patient's nice and relaxed arm, you're going to abduct it and flex it in a 90 degree angle and place it under your armpit a little bit. And then with your free hand, you're gonna take your thumb on the coracoid process and your fingers on the spine of the scapula and you're going to apply inward rotation and downward pressure in order to try and get that humeral head to subluxate. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Ideally for this, you would be on an assessment table, but since we don't have that, I'm just gonna be on my knees for it. So I'll have the patient, she's gonna come in, lie nice and supine with her arms relaxed. I'm going to take her arm, abduct it, flex it nice and relaxed, kind of place it underneath my arm. Now my free hand is going, my thumb is going to take and find the coracoid process while my other four fingers are on the spine of the scapula. Now I'll be applying inward rotation as well as downward pressure in order to try and get the humeral head to subluxate. A positive test would include possibly some apprehension from the patient, although they shouldn't really feel any pain with this test. And then also if your thumb slides past the coracoid process, that would be a positive test. And you may have slight to moderate apprehension of the patient. Um, no, unfortunately, no statistics of validity, reliability, sensitivity, or specificity for this test have been determined yet, but that is how you complete the posterior draw test of the shoulder. Thank you.